Hello everyone, my name is Richard Sha, and today we'll talk about point of care ultrasound cardiac. So we'll talk about indications, probe placement for four cardiac windows, assessing volume status with IVC, and the five E's. Indications. So some indications for doing a POCUS for cardiac includes assessing LV function, looking at RV size and function, looking at IVC size to assess volume status, determine if there's any pericardial effusion and the size of it, and look for obvious valvular abnormalities. This is the probe I use, and it's the face array or the cardiac probe. So we have the patient in the lateral decubitus position, and this is best in a parasternal and apical views, and this swings the heart closer to the probe for sharper images. For a subcostal view, we have the patient in supine position. So there are two planes on the ultrasound that I want to mention. There is the short axis view, which goes this way, and the long axis view, which goes this way. The long axis view, we have the probe marker pointing to the patient's right shoulder, and the short axis view, we have the probe marker pointing to the patient's left shoulder. So here we'll talk about the four cardiac windows. And they are the parasternal long, parasternal short, apical, and subcostal. So the parasternal short, we have the probe positioned as so, and you have the probe marker pointing that way. For parasternal short, you just rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, and the probe marker points that way. And for apical, while you are in the parasternal short view, all you have to do is slide your probe marker down to the apex of the heart and point it this way and so you have the probe marker still pointing at the patient's left shoulder. For subscostal, you're going to swing the probe right below here at the substernal area and the probe marker is pointed towards the patient's left side. So here are what the cardiac windows look like on the ultrasound. The parasternal long, like I mentioned before, it's around second and fourth intercostal space, and make sure the probe marker is pointed toward the patient's right shoulder. On the ultrasound, the probe marker should be on the right side of the screen. So here we have the RVOT, which is the right ventricular outflow tract, and this is the ascending aorta, and this is the aortic valve. This is the left atrium, mitral valve, and here we have the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve, this is the pericardium, left ventricle, interventricular septum, and this is the left ventricular posterior wall. Here we have the parasternal short view. So, just a reminder, you get this by rotating your transducer clockwise 90 degrees when you are in the parasitinal lawn view. And the probe marker points to the patient's left shoulder. And again, the probe marker on the ultrasound machine should be on the right. So here we see the interventricular septum, which should span around this area. This is the left ventricle. This is the inferior wall. And this is the anterior lateral papillary muscle, and this is the posterior medial papillary muscle. So this window, when you see the two papillary muscles, also known as the two punching bags, it's a good spot to assess for LV function. Next, we'll talk about the parasternal short axis at the level of the aortic valve. To get this view, to get this view when you're at the parasternal short axis from the previous slide, all you have to do is drop the tail of the probe so the, beam, so the beam is pointed towards the base of the heart. And, and if you still don't get this, you can move the probe this way a little bit. Okay. So this view, you see something called a Mercedes sign and it looks like this. And that's pretty much where the aortic would be if it's closed. Uh, so this one is open, so you don't really see that sign. Uh, so here, let me point out some structures. This is the RV outflow track, 
and right next to it is a tricuspid valve and right before that is the atrium here we have the interatrial septum this is the left atrium the pulmonary this is the pulmonary valve and the main pulmonary artery next we have the apical four chamber view you get this view by moving your transducer to the apex of the heart and point it upwards towards the patient's head uh, to get to the base of the heart and uh, again the probe marker is towards the patient's left shoulder and here we have the uh, marker on the ultrasound on the right side of the screen so let me point out some structures this is the left ventricle this is the intraventricular septum right ventricle tricuspid valve anterior leaflet tricuspid valve septal leaflet this is the right atrium this is left atrium here we have the atrial septum this is the mitral valve anterior leaflet this is the mitral valve at the posterior leaflet and these two are the pulmonary veins so here we have the right superior pulmonic vein and this is the left inferior pulmonic vein next we'll talk about the apical two chamber view and you can get this directly from your apical four chambers just by rotating just by rotating your transducer 45 degrees counterclockwise until the right side of the heart disappears so all you see is the left side of the heart here we have the left ventricle this is the mitral valve and this is the left atrium next we'll talk about the subcostal view and to get this view you have the transducer pointed here in this area with the marker pointed towards the patient's left and the tail kind of drop down a little bit at an angle and you should see something like this so this is the right ventricle over here is the right atrium and this is left ventricle and over here should be the left atrium okay moving on we'll talk about the inferior vena cava to get this when you are in the subcostal view all you have to do is turn the probe marker counterclockwise 90 degrees and you raise the probe up a bit to get about somewhat a perpendicular angle towards the patient's skin so once again it's at the sub xiphoid the marker points towards the patient's head and you drop the tail of the probe and follow the IVC as it enters the right atrium okay let me show you so the right atrium is over here and this is the IVC so the right atrium is as labeled and the IVC is labeled as well and you can see that it flows into the right atrium Okay. Next, we'll talk about volume assessment with IVC. So depending on the size of the IVC, we can tell if the patient is underfilled, a little dry, euvolemic, or volume overloaded. So here we have just the size of the IVC. And when it says the IVC diameter, it's in centimeters. And we measure about one centimeter in from where the right atrium is and then you measure this way like so so if that measurement is less than 1.5 centimeters and when you tell the patient to take a sniff like this and there's a 50 percent collapse or greater and there's a greater than 50 percent collapse then you can safely say that the patient is underfilled or volume down and that estimated CVP corresponds to about 5.0 to 5. The diameter is about 1.5 to 2.5 with a greater than 50% collapse on the sniff test. The patient's a little dry. And if the patient's 1.5 centimeters to 2.5 centimeters with less than 50% collapse, we can say that he or she is euvolemic. And if it's greater than 2.5 with less than 50% on the sniff and if it's greater than 2.5 with 
less than 50% collapse on the sniff test, we can say the patient is overloaded. Next, we'll talk about pericardial effusion. And pericardial effusion is basically the fluid that's accumulated in the heart, and that's the black anechoic area that you see right between the pericardium and the heart. And here in this video, the heart is moving from parasternal short view into parasternal long view, and you can see the black space between the heart right here. And this is the pericardium, and that's the heart muscle, and this space is the effusion. Um, and here, one other point I want to make is that you need to see it in more than one window to say that it's pericardial effusion. And for pericardial effusion, they are anterior to the descending aorta. So this is the picture from before. They are around this area, right, anterior to the descending aorta. And pleural effusions are posterior to the descending aorta. So if you increase the depth of this picture, and if the patient has pleural effusions, you will see it around this area, like so. Next, we'll talk about the five E's, and they stand for effusion, ejection, equality, exit, and entrance. For effusion, you want to see if there's pericardial effusion, and you want to assess if there's trace, or moderate, or significant. And normally you have a little bit of trace around the heart. It's abnormal if there's a lot of fluid around the heart. And now, if there's a significant amount, you think about cardiac tamponade. For ejection, you're assessing the LV function, and normally you have a grossly strong LV EF. And it's abnormal if you see a reduced contractility, and you think of heart failure. So for ejection, usually in the parasternal long axis, when you're looking at the mitral valve leaflet, the anterior leaflet, the leaflet that's closest to the septum, when it's in diastole, and if that leaflet's almost hitting the septum, then you can grossly say that they have grossly normal ejection fraction. So for, equ for equality, you want to compare the ventricle ratios. So the size of the ventricles, the RV to the LV. If the RV is less than the LV, that's normal. If the size of the RV is greater than or equal to the LV, that's abnormal. And if you have a dilated RV, you want to think about pulmonary embolism. Which Next, exit, which is the, the blood exiting the heart, and that you want to assess the aortic root diameter. If it's less than four centimeters, that's normal. If it's greater than four centimeters, and that's abnormal. And you see that with a pericardial effusion, you want to think about aortic dissection. And then entrance, which is the blood that's entering the heart, which allows you to, which, which assesses the IVC diameter. So the IVC diameter normally is 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters. If it's below 1.5 centimeters, you want to think about hypovolemia. And if it's above 2.5 centimeters, you want to think about hypervolemia. And remember, you also want to do the sniff test and look at the collapsibility of the IVC as well to help you determine the overall volume status. In summary, limited bedside echo is useful for focused clinical assessment of LV and RV size and its function, the IVC, pericardial fusion, and grossly abnormal valvular abnormalities. The windows we spoke about are parasternal long, parasternal short, apical four chamber, subcostal slash IVC. And we just spoke about the five E's. They stand for effusion, ejection, equality, exit, and entrance. And these are my references. Thank you for listening.